All right. Hey, Fire away. I want to ask you about having the same staff back for a second year. All your position coaches are coordinators, special teams coaches, all back. How important is that? And how much can that translate into what you guys do in practice? Oh, I think it's huge because the the um, the coaching points that you want to get across are across, and and there's already that familiarity with the players. Now the rookies got to have to get to know everybody, but you'd be surprised too that when you bring in a new coach, that's a big step for myself and Shane to teach the guy the offense, or vice versa on the defensive side, Gannon to teach the defense too. That's a big portion of the time because you're you're not just teaching plays; you're teaching techniques within the plays. What's the responsibilities? You're teaching situations. So to have the entire staff back is, is huge. And why do you bring the staff back? Because you have talented guys on the staff. And so my vision here is to be able to keep the staff intact, win games, obviously. Guys will obviously get promoted from that and then be able to have a good young group of uh, nucleus guys that are in position or in support roles to be able to promote. I think, you know, that was something that the, the college team that I came up in Mount Union, that's what we did a ton of. Um, it, you look around the NFL that, you know, that that's what, you know, some of the great teams do is they promote from within. And, and so it's just accumulating talent and trying to promote from within. And, uh, I'm, and I'm glad to say we were able to promote a couple guys, you know, Alex Tanney and, and Tyler Scudder from, you know, support roles to in a little bit more, uh, more responsibility roles. So. Hey, Nick, um, we talked to Shane last week. He clarified he's going to be calling the plays. We know you shipped it last year. Can you kind of take us through that decision? I know it's a collaborative process. Yeah, of process, course. But um, so, you know, as we're going through, like, I, you know, I, um, we, we're going through games, and there, there's obviously a lot of things that go on during the game, right? And I was just noticing, you know, like Shane was already calling the two-minute drills. Um, and, and like I said, it was it, it's a collaborative event. Like, you can't just go out and call a game without putting the plan together, right? You put the plan together all week. Well, one of my favorite things to do in the world is help put the plan together and get, get put the plays in you think are going to work against the defense. That's like one of my favorite things to do in the world. So we're continuing to do that. But what I noticed was like, well, I wasn't communicating enough with Gannon about something, or I wasn't communicating enough with the defense when, um, you know, something that they needed to be pumped up or coach clay or the special teams like i, I love doing that to go over into the the kickoff return and say let's go let's get a play going there's a lot of things that have to happen to offense before you know a, a drive starts um you, you have to communicate to all the offensive players here's the next string of plays you have to put together the next string of plays of what you're talking about so i just you know i really trusted shane shane and i Spent so much, spent so much time throughout the week together. Um, again, coming up with the with the plan, with you know, between amongst the the coaches and you know, Shane and I are doing the most most of that heavy lifting. And you know, it just, you know, it, we shifted to it during one of the games. I, I felt comfortable with being able to, you know, talk to everybody. I get, there's things I got that come up with the referees that I need to do. There's things that come up with the guys upstairs that I need to talk through a situation. Um, that Howard might need to handle it. So there's just so many things that came up, and you know what? And I wanted to trust the guys on the staff that I had, and because I have good, I have good coaches. We're, we just talked about it, um, and so I trusted Shane. Uh, he did a great job when he when he did it, and I feel really comfortable that we continue on that way. And uh, again, like like I said though, like I'll be in every meeting. I'm sitting in every meeting. Uh, nothing more than I, that I like to do than, than to, to put plays together. There's nothing more I like to do than correct plays after practice, right? To go in there after practice and tell the guys, this is exactly how I want this to look, or we have to fix this. So um, the only thing that's going to be different of me not being the, the, what you would say, offensive coordinator is just the, the play calling aspect of it. But even in that aspect, like, we're coming up with the first 15 together, right? We're coming up with the order of the third down. We're coming up with the order of the second half openers at times. We're coming up with the, the red zone, the two minute, and all. there's so much that goes into it. Like Just like the draft, it can't be like, hey, we're at pick seven, go. Like There's been a lot of work that's went into it. We ain't going to have pick seven. All right, let me rephrase that, okay? All right. <laughs> there's been a lot of work that's been go that's went into that, and it's the same thing uh, as we go. And, again, like I said, I got total confidence in Shane. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to, to go and have that same process next what's, year. What's the biggest difference you've seen in, in Jalen Hurts these two weeks of practice? 
Jalen is, in my opinion, um, is, is, is more comfortable in the offense, right? And that's just this, the, the, the part of the process the second year, right? He knows where the receivers are going to be versus different looks. He knows where to go with the football a little bit quicker. Um, we've, you know, and, the, and, and we've done a jo our job as coaches, and I don't want to say we've done a good job, but what we've done as coaches is figured out you know, what he likes and what he's good at and what and all these different things. So it's just accumulating those reps. And like we talked about, you know, we, I think you guys asked me that a couple, last year was, you know, some of these quarterbacks that have been played for so long, they're in year 15, 16, 17, they're getting better at reading it. Why? Because they've seen the play over and over and over again. Well, that's the same progression that Jalen has. And, and what Jalen – the reason you know that about Jalen, the reason we know Jalen's going to continue to get better is because of the character and the football character and the personal character that he has. Um, this is just the type of guy that's going to reach his maximum potential because of all the off-the-field qualities he has. I've also noticed, you know, just the, the crispness of the drop, right? He's been, it's been, you know, the fundamentals, his fundamentals have improved, and he's really worked hard at that. And so, um, you know, he, he's, he's working every day to get better, and I'm, I'm really pleased where he is right now. But, you know, he's gotta, we got to continue to lay the groundwork, right? You know, the, that he went 11 to 12 yesterday and seven on seven means nothing. He has to continue to get better and better and better. I don't know what you guys would have a better feel of what he was today. I didn't keep a track. I'll go watch it when I'm done with you guys. But uh, I thought he had a pretty good day today, too. Um, and, but really, what I notice is he, he's really seeing where to go with the football and, and going there and going there quick. But again, got to keep working that because it's just going to get harder and harder. Nick, you have less practices than most teams, OTAs than most teams, and no mandatory. How has it been more productive now that you've gone through it? Because there's a lot of coaches say we need. Reps, sure. How's it been more productive? You know, we didn't have, as you saw today, right? We we had a seven on seven period, and it was it was uh, twenty four plays of seven on seven. You guys left, and we had an, a, a rookie development um, a period after that. So we ended up getting thirty four plays of seven on seven. So really, it was two periods. You know, when you look back into how OTAs used to run a little bit more, and and we and again, it's all about how you device how you run the, the system, you'd have a couple more periods, right? And you'd have maybe have a more 11 on 11 and, and this and that. But, you know, as we looked at all the different years that we've had, like, even when I go back to my days as a coordinator with the Colts, like, even when it was 11 on 11, it was all it was a passing drill, right? And so what happens there sometimes is you get these you get these big dudes out there and you're like, all right, it's just we're not going real hard. Good luck telling Jason Kelsey we're not going real hard or Fletcher Cox or, uh, you know, any of those guys like, hey, it's not. So we just took them out of it and we were able to go full speed. But what I, the one thing that was different when you didn't have to do do all the prep to get into the plays. Right. Um, you have, were able to spend more time in individual where that's what should be happening right now. The fundamentals should be being built right now. And so when you have a practice where you have five, six, and, and I'm not knocking anybody that has this. I used to do this all the time too. But when you have a per period of where you have six or five or six periods of uh, team periods, well, naturally your individual period time is going to shrink, right? Well, we were able today to have 35 minutes of or whatever it was. I don't know the exact time I have the schedule here, but we – we we're able to have 35 minutes of individual time of perfecting our fundamentals. And really at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, we're going to call a good play, they're going to call a good play, right? This player is going to be pretty good, and this player is going to be pretty good, right? And let's just say Detroit. Detroit's going to call a big good play, we're going to call a good play. Uh, our receiver is going to be pr really good, and their DB is going to be really good. Well, what gives in a scenario like that? Fundamentals. And so we've been able to have, and I, this is why I love this part of this, this time of year so much, we've had these long periods of individual where we're perfecting our fundamentals. Well, it's a step. We, you go fundamentals, then you work it into team, then you go here. So great, the off-season program, we had a ton of fundamentals work, which is going to put us in a position to have good team period, more team periods when we get into training camp and even the team periods that we had, or pardon me, the seven-on-seven -seven periods that we had here in uh, um, OTA. So the f that's what I noticed the most, Howard, was that the fundamentals, I just could see guys getting better and better because the amount of the sheer time that we had and to go back to the coaches, like I, I feel like we hired guys that, that are good. At, one of my criteria was that they better be good at teaching the fundamentals. Not everybody has to be a phenomenal schemer, but everybody that's coaching a position has to be good at the fundamentals so we can take a player from here to here.
right? We can take a player to a different level that they can't reach on their own. As Carlos asked, though, if, if, if they were as productive as you said, why wouldn't six more practices make you guys better? Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Um, so, uh, again, th you want to look at everything right there as far as health of the – health of the team, everything like that. We felt like what we, the time that we got with them, uh, the, the four weeks on the field, because we went one, one more week in phase one where we were lifting more, the four, the four weeks that we got with them, we felt like that was what we needed right there. Sometimes if you, you, you keep going with something like that, and you get, it is a lot of individual. I think it, at some point, right, it's like, at some point it becomes a little stale too. We thought that that was the perfect amount of time for us. Um, that's just what we thought. Um, and again, everybody's going to do it a little bit different. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Well, we felt like what, that was what benefited us. I was just teasing you. Yeah. yeah. yeah back to the, to the play calling. Um, what percentage of the time, um, sorry, was that the last question? I didn't see. That, what's up? I'm going to back here. Um, what, what percentage of the time is, he, is she in calling a play and you're thinking, oh, that's it. That's what I would have called. Um, and, and what, how often then is he calling something where you're like, crazy? <laughs> And again, just remember this, like the plays are just, again, I'm on there. I, I'm on the headset talking about the next group of plays. The plays are discussed of what's coming up. Okay. Shane, I want to see this and this. What do you have in mind? This and this. Ooh, I like that. What if we did this? Like th that communication is happening. The next, like you don't, again, you don't go into the next set and go, all right, here we go. I got the first one, but I'm rolling the dice on it. That is communicated through it, right? And so... But there is times where there has to, there's a situation that pops out of nowhere, right? And that, and that Shane's got to think quick. And, and most of the time, again, because I just can't even explain to you how much time we spend together and how much time we spend together in the past, the, the thought process is the same. He knows exactly what I want on a third and long in, uh, at the 40-yard line. He knows exactly what I want. If you, we would, if, what's that game show where you go behind and then, I don't even remember. But we would write down the same exact play. Yeah, the newlywood. Me and Shane, Shane and I. Yeah, so a lot, a lot. It's a lot of similarities. But again, there's just so much discussion. And it, it again, it's it. Like I said, some of the most of those most of those discussions, I'm right there with them. But if I'm talking to the defense in a particular one, I have been able to say to Shane, Hey, what's the next couple you got? Good, cool. I like that. Let's add this and this, and maybe let's change this right here. So that's kind of how it's going down. And uh, But just, again, so much confidence in Shane. And he, he's just done a great job, um, not only here, but you saw what he did in, with the Chargers as well. Was there any part of you that kind of – I know these practices it, are voluntary. Uh, Jalen Rager wasn't here two days that we were here. Was he able to be here at all? And what do you feel about him? Yeah, I, I'm not going to discuss. It is voluntary, so I don't ever want to put anybody's attendance out there. We had very good attendance, very, very good attendance. Now, guys, things pop up for guys here and there. As, as, we, as we know, things can get uh, hectic. Things happen. Family things happen. Uh, personal things happen. There's things that pop up. And so um, he, had, he had great attendance through this. And, you know, it just so happened the times that you guys were here, he, he, he wasn't. Um, it, but he had great attendance through this and was really into it. And, uh, you know, there's no denying that he, that Jalen has talent and, and we just, we, he just got to continue to try to be consistent. And that was our discussion. And I told you guys this, uh, the discussion that I've had with every player, we have a discussion with every player at the end of the year of what we need to do better, what we did well. And, and Jalen, you know, was one of the things that we talked about was, well, this okay. You're you're not at TCU where you get 11 balls thrown to you a game. You might you might get three, or you might get two. Make it take advantage of the ones that you get and just be consistent with it. And uh, and that's what we're working on right now because he does. There's no doubt that he has talent. And we're excited to work with him. Was, again. Again. Next to that, was it difficult at all uh, to give up the play calling, given that you know it seems like that's something an offensive coach kind of strives for when you're working your way up to have that ability. Um. From an ego standpoint. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's where a lot of problems happen in the NFL is from an ego standpoint, right? Is if like you, you work it, what's the the best thing is to, to do? Like if I said I'm gonna stand on a table and run these plays that we ran with Philip Rivers, well that that's because that's who that's what we do, that's an ego thing to me, right? And so it's the same thing here. What what was wor what I felt like I needed to make a change in the sense of how to free me up to be a better head coach. 
um, and I had a good assistant to to call the plays, and so that's that's what I that's what I went with, and and so yeah, no no hesitation there at all, um, no ego thing there at all. Shane's done a great job, and I'm imagining we, we win we do what we're supposed to do and win games like we we were paid to do to come here. Shane will get an opportunity to to be a head coach, and then we rediscuss rediscuss it again, but. I don't, again, don't want you guys to get caught up in this, well, because he's calling the plays on game day, that's, that's it. That's he, like, there is so much that happens before the games are being called. And, like, I'm not going to tell you the percentage of plays that I call or what he calls, but, like, there's just so much that's happening before that. It is a true group effort going into it, and then it's just a matter of who's the one calling it on, on Sunday. Yeah, and just to uh, put a bow on the no make cam decision, to say that health is kind of the, the driving factor there and then what are the kind of what different arms of the organization are you hearing from to kind of inform that? sure it, it's always about the player's health and then it's but there's also got to be a point of yes i'm hearing the trainers i'm hearing the strength staff and our sports science department i'm hearing the doctors all right they're the experts in the yardage they're the of how many guys how much guys have run the timing of uh, this day is a longer day, and then this day is a shorter day, and this day is a longer day. Like, I didn't go to school for that, right? I, you know, I, I went to school to be an education major, but I was really preparing to be a football coach. That's what my coach was preparing me to do. But so I'm listening to them in that. I am. I am listening to their input in that. But just like when the offense goes out there and takes the field or the defense goes out there and takes the field or the special teams goes out there and takes the field, my name is on it. And we win or lose, my name is on it, right? And so it's the same thing here. I'm listening to them, but I also have a feel for what the team needs as far as, hey, we need five more plays on seven on seven here. We need 10 more minutes of, or 10 less minutes of, one, of, uh, of individual here. And so all that's being taken count for, and yes, the player's health is first, but there's also a feel on my end of, hey, what do we need to do? What do we need to get done to put ourselves in, in my opinion, it was that fundamental step. It was the little bit of teamwork that we got. The other team we got teamwork we got was in the it was in walkthrough. But the teamwork that we got, and were we getting enough for the quarterback? You know, and the and for us to be able to correct plays, but from the wide receivers, tight end, defensive side, and then were we getting the fundamentals? And that's where we came up with the the amount of time that we had on the field. Are you practicing tomorrow? We are not. Aaron Moorhead had to catch a punt to get the day off tomorrow, and. He dropped the first one, and I, but the wind was swirling. The tra trainers had, or the equipment guys had it going there. He dropped the first one. Nick Rallis dropped the next one, and then Aaron came back and caught the third one, which you would expect from a guy that played with Peyton Manning and played in the Super Bowl. So, hey, Nick. Uh, uh, on that note, um, it looks like you're having a ton of fun out there. I heard you <coughs> offer $1,000 to the coach if he punches the ball out. Just saying. <laughs> and you're having, you're having a blast out there, um, and you're doing all these contests. How, how much fun are you having? And is it different because this is – year two versus, you know, shoot. I'd like to think I had fun in year one as well. Um, but because, Hey, I mean, this is, this is awesome. I, again, I'm, I've said this before and I'm 40 years old and I'm still part of a team. Like I get to go watch my son who's, a, who's seven years old, play baseball. He's have, having a blast being part of a team, hanging with his buddies, chewing the big league chew bubble gum and putting eye black under. And then his teammates are doing it like, and I'm watching, I'm like, man, that's fun. I'm like, shoot, I get to do that every – I get to go to work tomorrow and do that here. So it's fun. It's fun. And it's fun to – you know, football It what is fun to go out there and, and see guys improve, right, and see guys get better and, and to have that goal of, hey, how are we – what are we going to do today to get a little bit better and, and just see the climb over and over and over again. It's just, it's just part of the reason why we, we do what we do. And so, of course, I mean, it, it, it was a great time to, to be out there with the guys. And, and you know what? To go back uh, on some of the things you guys have asked me about the OTAs, the last two years we, we got nothing. Like last year we did no team drills. The year before that, now I know I was in Indianapolis, but nobody had OTAs, right? And so to be able to get on the field and have some seven-on-seven, seven, to be able to correct and looking forward to going up there and watching the 34 plays of a seven-on-seven seven today, to be able to correct that, that that's awesome. Like, uh, you know, I've, I've had the – I look forward to like at night when uh, my kids go to bed, and my wife and I are done talking to call Jalen and talk through his 10 plays of seven on seven. And hey, what were you thinking here? What were you doing there? Or to call Gardner and go through that or to text Devante and say, hey, on this play, like, again, like I can't tell you, my favorite thing to do is to correct 
and watch practice table guys and correct and praise from that. Hey, this was awesome. Hey, this needs to be a little bit better. Like that's like going out and playing golf for me. I love doing that. And so, um, and I think that, that a lot of our coaches love doing that. And you can feel that from our players that they love doing that. And so when you get a bunch of guys that love being around football, right? Like that's a, that's a, that's a cool thing. That's a great team. And, and we're just looking to build on that every single day. Uh, the latest I called Jalen. Um, Jalen and I do talk a little bit earlier in the night. I, I think I text Gardner, hey, you ready to talk at like 1030 one night because my wife and I went out to dinner. And he texted me in the morning and we were going to talk now because I was sleeping last night. So not too late. Not too late. Uh, Nick, AJ Brown, Nick. Um, I get you. I, this is about techniques and fundamentals. You talked about this time of year. But as an offensive coach, when you get a player like that in your system, can you kind of feel – at this time of year, what he's going to be able to do, whether it's spacing or – Yeah, you know, and A.J., it's not a real big secret. He's been in the NFL, right? And so it's not like you're projecting, oh, here's what he could be good at. We know, right? We've seen a lot of tape of what he's been good at and what he's been successful at. We know his attributes and how the, and, his, and his talents of how they've translated to the NFL. And so there's a lot less getting to know – there now there's a lot of getting to know with him and Jalen not as a personal level but throwing the ball to each other there's a lot of him getting to know the other receivers within the building and other and other players to connect with them um but really excited obviously to have AJ he's, he's a great he's very talented this is a talented wide receiver group a uh, really talented wide receiver group that we're looking forward to working with Nick is there a newcomer that stood out to you the most whether it's a rookie someone required by our trade or a free agent um yeah, I mean, guys are guys are all. They're, the, the I'm really excited about the draft picks. I'm really excited about the free agents. This is going to be a generic question. I know you're not going to get what you want here. I'm really excited about the new new additions that we have, and I'm excited to work with these guys. And and again, all these guys, not just the newcomers, um, but I just see guys taking steps and climbing and getting a little better. Like last year. And you're going to hear our guys say this. Last year we talked about getting a little bit better each day, getting 1% better each day. We just changed that a little bit to climb a little bit each day, climb, climb, climb. We're on this. We're trying to climb this mountain, but we just need to do this part today and this part today and climb a little. I saw that from a lot of the team this year. Um, and just a credit to our coaches. You know, I, I can't say enough about our coaches and how good of a staff we have that, you know, I see Denard Wilson and, and DK McDonald working with the defensive backs and how hard they push those guys with the different fundamentals that they're asking them to do and I and I, I see the DBs taking steps because um, one because they're talented room but also because of the coaching that they're getting from coach Wilson and, and, and coach McDonald and you know obviously you know stout and you know he's gonna he's gonna push those guys to work in an individual period like crazy you guys see him work he's sweating through his shirt um, so again just seeing a lot of good steps by, by a lot of guys and look forward to getting the pads on and, and going into training camp with it Shoot, no doubt. You know, like I, you know, again, everything we learn is from somebody, right? And everyone just step into this role and like you learn it from somebody by watching somebody. That's what, you know, that's how you. I feel like you get into a role like this is because you've been so observant about the the the, the good coaches you've been around in the past and the bad coaches you've been around in the past and what you're going to repeat. And so again, I've had that from the very beginning with my dad. Um, you know, growing up in a coach's uh, coach's house, I've learned you know a lot of a lot of good things there. To college, uh, to the NFL coaches I've worked with, like Frank Reich, and then as I've talked to you guys a lot about, like I, I love reading and really more watching the documentaries. I'm, I, I, I I extended myself a little bit there. I like watching the documentaries on on these guys and and what makes good teams work and and good players work and good coaches work. Well, shoot, then you get an opportunity. Like, so if I'm going to be watching 30 for 30 at home and, and getting information there, then I get to go out to dinner with Jay Wright, uh, one, one of the best basketball coaches of all time, and Dick Vermeil. And, like, and I, and I, I, that's the first time I've said Jay or, or Dick Vermeil. It's coach, right? And I'd be able to go out there and, and, yeah, I'm asking them questions. And so obviously I'll keep those conversations private, but what a what great knowledge that they have and how unbelievable it, uh, I feel so honored that they're willing to share that with me right and and be you know you know coach Wright of being a, an Eagles fan he's willing to share that with me and and his his amount of information that he has and same thing with coach Vermeil. and so and and that wasn't 
just the dinners either, the, you know, just this dinner, right? It was, I, I got encouragement and, and support from those guys through the entire year. Um, you know, they have my cell phone number and I get a text from them, win or lose, however I need, whatever, when they felt like when I needed a good text of some support or some um, advice, I was getting that. You know, that's what good coaches do. They know when to give some support. They know when to give some advice. Uh, they know when to praise. And, and uh, those guys are, are really phenomenal coaches. And I'm, a, and I'm, I'm very thankful that I'm, I have them at uh, I'm able to have their number to ask them a question here or there. I would have loved to have them like as a 23 year old coach be like, Hey, I'm going to call coach, right? See what, well, but I have them now. So it's, it's, that's awesome.